Hello and welcome to Orion Outreach. I'm Joe Johnson and it is an honor to be joined by Chuck Haskin today uh, from the VFW Post 334, correct? That is correct. Welcome. Uh, there's a reason we have you here today. We found out recently that you had received some recognition from the national organization of the VFW as part of their Still Serving campaign um, for everything that you and the VFW do here in Lake Orion. Uh, what does it mean to you to be recognized nationally by the VFW? What it, as a U.S. Army veteran, that uh, I spent my years in 1970, 1971, that when I originally signed up with the U.S. Army, I signed a contract. And that contract was not only to serve for those two years, but it's a lifelong contract. And what our post does is we continue our service from when we were in the uh, Army, Navy, Marines, or Air Force, and now Space Force. Oh, yeah. That, uh, now I got no veterans from there yet, but we go out and we do things in the community and do things for our, for our, our other veterans that need help. And so to be recognized by the National VFW, it's, it's my honor to be done that. But it's all for the things that our post does that I'm basically the communicator. I'm also the treasurer or quartermaster and run all the money. But it's my job as the adjutant that uh, anytime we do things, I try to get it out in the local papers to explain what our post does. Mm. That's fantastic, and, and you guys do so much in the community. Before we get into that, what is your history here in Lake Orion? In Lake Orion, I moved to this area about 30 years ago, mm. and um, just a period of time after I got out of the service. Uh, I was born and raised over on the west side of town over in Southfield. And then me and my family and my kids, um, both my kids uh, graduated from the Oxford schools. And they, uh, you know, they did, did pretty well for themselves and now are gone elsewhere. But we're still here and we're still doing things in our community. And uh, one of the major places we do it at is at the Orion Veterans Memorial, mm. which to me is the prettiest, most sincere memorial we have here in the United States. And it's one of the best well kept secrets mm. that people drive by it every day. You know, it's 30 some thousand cars go down M24. Yeah. yeah, here we are with that beautiful uh, memorial out there that uh, stopping to see it with the public. It's, it's be just beautiful. Yeah, I came out to this, commu this community in late 93. And during the 30 or so years that I've been in this community, I've seen and documented pretty much every phase of development of uh -huh. that memorial from the purchasing of the property to groundbreaking ceremonies to the addition of the various monuments and stuff that they've added throughout the years. Mm -hmm. um, most recently with like the raised garden beds and everything mm -hmm. like that. So it's been amazing watching the development well, of that memorial. Well, the, one of the most current memorials we have is the dog memorial. Mm -hmm. for all the service dogs that were out there. It, uh, really in this area, there was nothing out there for the service dog. So we, now we have that, and that's one of our most popular things now, is the, that service dogs with the two shepherds. That's it's amazing. It's a beautiful monument. Yeah. Yes. Talk about what led to you serving your country. How did, uh, talk about that phase of your life. Well, back in, after I got out of high school, they had the U.S. draft that was taking anybody who was over 18 years of old and stick them out there and you get the lucky number. <laughs> and I graduated like the lottery, right? the, lo <laughs> the lottery system, and that was the only lottery I ever won. <laughs> so it, uh, my number was 35. Wow. So in 1970, uh, my number was picked. It was my turn to go in the U.S. Army. Hmm. And uh, so didn't want to do that because I had a really good job at the time, and, but that was, was something I felt that I needed to do. Mm. And uh, so I went to basic training down in Kentucky, went to advanced training in Georgia. Uh, I had a short stint in Sports Hill, Oklahoma before I shipped off to Vietnam. Mm. And I could finalize my Army career while I was over in Vietnam. Wow, so how, how much time did you spend in Vietnam? Total time was about nine months. I got injured, so I was sent home, and they released me from the service once I got home. 
Wow. So, uh, but I arrived in February and left in November. Wow. So, did you receive a Purple Heart? No, I did not receive a Purple Heart. No? No, I was involved in a uh, Jeep accident. Mm -hmm. We were responding to an attack on the Australian Embassy in Saigon, and uh, we got rammed. Oh, wow. So uh, we think yeah. it was the sapper who attacked the, because it was after curfew, and so nobody should have been out at that time of night. Mm -hmm. But we were running without lights. They were running without lights, and we were just both going pretty fast. Mm. And uh, so it busted me up pretty good when we got in that accident. Wow. So you come home, and during that period in America's history, uh, Vietnam uh, soldiers, veterans that were returning home didn't receive a warm welcome when they re returned home. But over time, I think there's been a shift, and now it seems like America uh, recognizes what veterans have done and the sacrifices that we've that you've made um have you witnessed that have you witnessed a shift in america's appreciation for its its uh, uh, fighters and, and yeah. veterans no, Joe, i agree with you because before 9 11 you didn't want to tell anybody you were a veteran when we came home in the 70s and in the 60s we weren't welcome home when i tried to get in 72 when i tried to join a local vfw over in southfield they wouldn't let me in the door because I was a Vietnam veteran. Mm. Wow. It, was, it was all World War II veterans. They didn't consider one that was a war, and two, they didn't like what we were doing over there. You know, mm. they saw all this stuff. So I went for many, many years without doing anything with any veterans organization wow. or let anybody know I was a veteran. But after 9-11, that, that shift from 180 degrees, that people started appreciating for what we put our careers up for yeah. and did for this country and what the younger generations are being called out to do for 9-11 with Death of Storm, Kuwait, Option Freedom. Um, and my own unit right now, they're attached to the 101st Airborne down in Kentucky. Uh, I was with the military police and they have 43 different places they are at right now around the world that we don't hear about. Mm. But they're trying to do what they can to keep the globe peaceful right. and uh, doing that. So, But w I agree with you. It's 100% that today versus back in the 70s and 80s, uh, being a veteran, uh, you see a lot of veterans today, they're wearing hats. They mm. tell them what they are. One thing that hat does is identify one veteran to another veteran that they can talk and you know if they relate to. Um, but, but during those times, you would you never see that. You yeah. would never, never see that. Yeah. So yeah. things have improved for the better, and now you're a member of the VFW. How did you get involved with Post 334? 334. I had just had a knee replacement, and I was going through a rehab, and I ran into a World War II veteran, Ernie Baker. Oh, yeah. And we used to sit there on our machines, and we started talking about different things. Then he invited me over for what they call coffee with a vet at the Oregon Veterans Memorial. Yeah. So I decided to go over there and started talking to the other veterans there and decided, yeah, yeah I could have a fit here. And I've been there ever since, and that's been, that was about 2014. Oh, wow. So, uh, but before that, uh, I was involved with the Disabled Veterans of America from since 1972, I've been part of those. But what I found that they didn't do it very much in the community. They were purely more for doing things for within the disabled veterans. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was looking for an organization that um, would give back to the community. Well, I, I worked for 30 some years with uh, General Motors and I was part of a veterans group there mm -hmm. that we tried to go out and help homeless vets. We tried to help um, do different things in the community and the VFW found was doing exactly the same thing. So I can make that transition over there and been very happy with that transition. Oh yeah, a very special group of people. And uh, just recently we had you here in the studio. You did a, a check presentation to the Fish Food Pantry in Oxford. Uh, that's not a one-time thing. That's a recurring thing. You want to talk about we, that? We, we started that about five years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, right after they got to their new building, I had seen uh, information on what they were trying to do there, and I approached our post 
about adopting a shelf. And um, so I got that passed. And so every year now, we donate $1,200 to the, the um, fish organization, as well as we have some of our members have also now volunteered some of their time over there to help out stock the shelves oh. and do different things like that. But uh, we feel that we're blessed to be able to reach the community through fish to get the food to the people who need it the most. And we're very, very happy with that. Also about that time, we made a donation to one of our favorite organizations. Um, and it's another well-kept secret here in the state of Michigan. It's over in Eaton Rapids, Michigan. It is a national home for children where a veteran will fall on financial hardship one way or another, or his family does, and they have young children. Mm. They can be go to this, uh, one of the homes there, and there is, I think, 52 homes in total now. Um, I think there's only 45 because of COVID. It's uh, filled up, but there's uh, mm. 77 kids there right now, I believe, for the last count we got. But the VFW supports 100% of the expenses that family is going to face there. They, people move into a home, they'll buy all the bedding, the uh, furniture, the stove and refrigerator, washer, dryer. The only thing that uh, parents are responsible for is their cell phones. But then most of them live there about four years. And what the national home is not is not a handout to people. It's a place where they can go out and they recover. They'll get the training, do what needs to be done. The kids go to school, get an education, and the parents could also go to get trade school and or go get an education. But when they're done after four years, they take all the stuff that we populated the home with, they take that with them to start at their new place where they go. So they can hit the um, outside of the national home running. And uh, we've had some really, really good results from doing that. So. And then annually, you also recognize uh, local police and fire. Talk about that. Yeah. Well, in Oxford, we had that very sad situation back in November with the shooting at the Oxford High School. We had two organizations that executed to the best of their ability. Um, the Oakland County Sheriff's Department, Oxford Post, they arrived there and apprehended the individual before he could do any more damage. I believe he had seven or nine more shells in his, his pistol mm -hmm. when they arrested him. But they arrested him and they didn't have to shoot him. They arrested him and got him out of there. And we had another organization, the Oxford Fire Department, that got there immediately. They assisted the police in uh, securing the area. Also, they put triage up there to take care of the wounded that they had and got them to the hospitals as soon as they could. So we approached our national VFW and give them the story about what happened. And it was unusual, we got two, two groups with the Sheriff's Department and the Fire Department. Both received the National VFW Safety Award. Mm -hmm. And we presented that here um, back in the uh, first part of the month. So that was a very, very nice ceremony that we did with them. Yeah, it was a tragic event, but it brought out the best in our best. first responders. I, I talked to uh, our police chief who was uh, one of the first on the scene and he had some heartbreaking stories yeah. to share but like you said it brings out the best and it's great that they're being recognized and speaking of the fire department you also help uh, make sure that uh, people keep their smoke detectors in working order um, tell yes, us about that we heard that the um, Oxford fire department was starting up a new program and they had done this about 10 years ago in their area where the fire department goes out house to house and in particular, they're looking for senior citizens or low income areas and asking them when you answer the door, does your smoke alarm work? Or do you use your uh, natural gas alarm work? And if they don't, they check the battery and uh, they'll replace it for them. If they have a unit that's over 10 years old or they don't have one at all, they'll provide a new one and install it for them. So that program, um, they're starting it up now in, in Oxford. 
but uh, they needed some, they're starting a drive to try to do that. So our folks heard about it and we donated $5,000 wow. toward getting that program kicked off. And they're looking to get other s organizations and people to donate money. But they're hoping in, start in, in the month of May, they're gonna start getting out there and starting this replacement and or um, making sure that we don't read in the paper or hear on the news about a senior couple mm -hmm. passing away during the night because their smoke alarm didn't work or because they had a gas leak. And we've had both of those in this area in the last month. Yeah. So they're looking to help it out and uh, we're, we're looking to help them out as much as we can with our donation. Wow. How is all this possible? How are you funding these programs? Yeah. <laughs> One of the things, we'll be here next month right. in April to talk about our annual kickoff party for the what's called the VFW Buddy Poppy. And the VFW Buddy Poppy has been around since the 19, or after the teens, after World War I, it started up. And we've been doing it every May, right on Mother's Day, since World War I. What we do is we go out in the streets of Lake Orion, Oxford, Clarkston, um, Leonard. Uh, we also are going to stores like Kroger's, Ace Hardware, um, Bass Pro, uh, Sam's Club. And we spend two to three weekends, um, usually Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, out looking for donations for our buddy poppies. Mm -hmm. And you'll see these little flowers everybody hangs in their windows. And uh, it, gets, it gets, you know, sun uh, turns out and fades them, so every year it's nice to refresh those. But through 100% of that money we raise, in the last few years we've been raising forty-five dollars to $55,000. From that, we turn around and put it into what we call the relief fund. And the relief fund can only be used for community programs and or veteran programs. So um, like when the uh, Orion Veterans Memorial wanted to do that dog memorial, we could, could, could commune, uh, donate money from our relief fund for that. Oh, or we turn around and uh, at Christmas this past year, we had two fa veterans families in Lake Orion that fell in hard times and couldn't have a Christmas for their kids. We heard about them and with seven kids in total, we donated close to $3,000 for that family two families to uh, have a good Christmas. Wow. At um, Thanksgiving, we, you know, through Wheels on Meals, we donated money that uh, I think it was 45 families this year on Meals and Wheels made sure they had a good Thanksgiving meal. Mm. Wow. And um, around Christmas, we had a call from the Lake Orange Schools that uh, they had some families that needed some winter coats. So we went and did a drive out there and worked with Myers and got a hundred and some odd coats donated to the Orion schools to give out to the kids. So they wouldn't have a cold winter. Wow. So that's less, we do many, many things. But again, wow. it's totally, one thing about our post is we don't have a physical building we're located at. We're located over in Oxford on Drainer Road with the Lake Point Community Church. They graciously let us use one of the rooms. We meet the second Tuesday every month and we meet at the church. So where other organizations, they have to spend a lot of the money they raise to keep the buildings open, pay the utilities and right. do all the good stuff. We take 100% of the money in our relief fund, goes back into the community and back into veteran programs. and. Um, mm. Our guys, the people who attend the RV of W, a lot of them are still working. Um, they may only help on a weekend, or they may only help once a month, or just maybe only in the summertime. In the wintertime, they can't. But our membership, uh, through the actions they do, raising the money, then going out and trying to help, or, you know, finding out about the different programs that need help, that uh, we, do what our mission is and which is to continue our service to our communities yeah. yeah and you said you have a presence on social media facebook that sort of thing we have our own vfw uh, facebook page 
and it's we try to keep it up to date as we can with all the different things that we do. So when we came here for the fish donation, uh, we took some pictures we had from that. We posted out there, let people know, okay. and we did the safety awards, and we do the different ones. We also remind people when things are going on in the community. Uh, we have up, oh, it's late April, I think it's the 28th of April, up at Great Lakes National Cemetery, they have headstone cleaning. Wow. There's 53,000 headstones out there that's gotten dirty during the winter. Mm -hmm. That you take a bucket of water and a sponge and you go out there and you wash the headstones. And they do one in the spring, one in the fall. But through our Facebook page, we can get out there and tell our post members and not only also the community what we're trying to do. Did I read you also provide a color guard? Our post has a full time uh, on a guard. My full-time is we're all retirees that when we get a call and the call could come in from Sparks Griffin in mm -hmm. here in Lake Orion or Modez, um, or it's the third Tuesday each month, we go up and volunteer all day long at the Great Lakes National Cemetery. Wow. And this past month, we only did three funerals because it's kind of still cold out. People are... Um, cremations are kind of waiting for the summertime. But when we get in the summer, we'll do between 14 and 18 funerals in a day. Mm. Wow. And um, plus we do all the onesie twosies that's around the area. In 2021, we completed 93 funerals. So wow. that, we, we kept it pretty busy. Pretty that's busy. amazing. Well, you and the FW Post 334 are just doing amazing things for the community. Um, if people need to reach out to you, then social media is the way to go. And social media, or if they ever want to contact us, my house number is 248-628-8975. And if I don't spend a lot of time at home because I'm pretty busy, but if they leave a message, I will get back with them within 24 hours. And uh, we're not only we're leaving it open for our post what we do, but we're always looking for new members. Uh, and yeah. if somebody ever wants to find out what we're about, come join one of our meetings, learn a little more about us. But um, right now, we most of our guys is running it. This is the Vietnam era. We're looking for some younger blood. Mm. And those all those guys that were around for 9-11, they all should be retiring right now. So if they're looking mm. for something to do, we stand our hand out to them, come see what we're all about. And they, as well as what we went through, uh, can relate, so. Fantastic. Well, congratulations on your national well, thank you. recognition. Thank you. Thanks for coming out, and we'll see you again in about a month or so to promote more of the, the Poppy program. Yep. And thank you for watching Orient Outreach. I'm Joe Johnson. We'll see you next time.